Hey everyone, it's John. Um, I'm going to do a short video basically on how to exploit Windows 7 using MSF Venom. So let's just start and do it. First thing, as per usual, discover our own IP address. So we'll do ifconfig. As you can see here, we're running the 192.168.193.4 address and we're on the slash 24 mask. So net discover, tack up. Attack half of the range, 192.168.193.0/24. So let's discover host on the local network. Okay, now the one we're going to exploit is this one here, 192.168.193.3. So control Z that, and just for clarity, we'll do a quick end map as well on that. Okay. Maximize that. Increase the verbosity. Right, so as you can see, Nmap has enumerated the host and it seems to be that we're running a Windows machine. So, in the interest of time, let's just kick on and just do this. Um, what will we do first? We will do... Service Postgres status. Mm -mm. Service Postgres. We'll start that. Right. So, we've got a Windows machine, and essentially what we're going to do is build a payload, which we would then entice the target to download. Essentially, it's a kind of a phishing attempt. We'll uh, create the virus. They should activate it by browsing to the, the actual URL and from that point we should establish a interpreter session. That's at least what the plan is, so let's see how we get on. So what you want to do is do an MSF Venom to create the actual payload and we'll do P in the payload we want to do is a Windows and I'm, oh, <laughs> my typing's rubbish. interpreter and a reverse TCP connection. L host, like I say, our IP address is 193.4, so I want to put that in there, 193.4, the L port, we're going to set that to the quad force, and the architecture we will use will be x86, and the file will make an exe, and we'll create a file, what will we call it, we'll call it something inconspicuous, so we'll call it Windows Update. <laughs> right, we'll see how we go with that. Okay, so that's the payload being created. It will ls it, and as you can see, I've done a few beforehand, but it's this one here. Windows update. Do you know what? I'll just remove them. Uh... Right, so we've created the payload. Now what we want to do is to actually move it to our Apache server where that will be located, and that's located in the var, www, and the HTML page. So we'll actually MV the Windows, up oh, MV Windows update, and we'll use it, or rather, now we'll move it to var, www, and HTML. So we see the end of that. That should be the new location of where the file resides. LS. Okay, now it's there. So what we want to do essentially right now is to activate our Apache server, which will actually host this file. So we'll do server, rather service, Apache 2, and we'll start. And that should actually start, uh, start our web server. So that's going now. Right. So essentially, we are now hosting this file on our IP address forward slash with this extension name. So the way you would deliver this would be to essentially maybe via an email or something, something to entice the the target to somehow click on this link. Um, 
I'm just going to keep it simple and just go on to my other virtual machine, the Windows machine, and just type it in so you can see it executing, but you get the drill. But first off, what we need to do is essentially have a listener waiting for the actual connection to come back. So what we need to do is do an MSF console, and essentially what we're going to do is configure the multi-handler to accept the Windows interpreter payload. And from that point, once we execute the actual virus from the end of the target machine, it should call back and a interpreter session should be established. Fingers crossed anyway. So we'll use multi-handler. Okay. Now, just a point of, uh, just to make an actual point here, a mistake I often made using the multi-handler would just be to, if I do the show options, would just be to go and configure, well it's actually not there right now, but I would just go and configure the L host and the L port and whatnot, but just remember to set the correct payload, because otherwise the actual connection will fail. The payload we are using is a Windows interpreter, and it's a reverse TCP. Computer froze a little bit there. There we go. Okay, so show options on this. And what we need to do is configure the L host, which is our IP address, 192.168.193.4. L port is configured as a quad force, but we'll just put that in anyway for good habit. So we'll set L host, 192.168.193.4. That's our IP address, remember. And we'll do the L port as the quad fours. So that's essentially configured. We can just double check that if you want to. And as you can see, that's all the correct information there. So I'll just exploit that now, and that will sit there and listen for the, the connection. So that's the handler started. Now, if I just go along with this Windows, now forgive me, I've got <laughs> my Windows. This is a a Windows virtual machine and it's ran out obviously of the, the time so it's saying it's a, not a genuine copy, just need to excuse that. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go into Windows Explorer, Internet Explorer rather, and just browse to the IP address, 193.4, what was the name of the file again I think, it was Windows Update. Um, Yes, Windows Update.exe. Okay, now it's prompted to run the file. Run it. Do you want to do it? Yes, because you think it's a Windows update. And hopefully we should have established a interpreter session. Yep, there we go. Meterpreter session one opened, and that's us there. So now we've got a interpreter session, you can do all the, the good fun stuff which you automatically can do with interpreter. We'll see what process ID we're on. We are on 1196, we'll see the actual process is running. Now, when you launch our interpreter exploit, it will essentially embed itself in the program which is exploited, but that program might be unstable um, and it's a good idea to kind of migrate the virus to a more stable process. So a good one to use is Explorer, which as you can see is this one here. All you do is identify which program you want to use and use the process ID. The process ID is on the left here. So if we migrate to this and we migrate to 1196. Oh, oh we must bend that process. Is that right? Oh, well, never mind. Just check that, get PID. Never mind, we already are in the, the stable one, so you can ignore that. If you weren't, somehow you could just, um, you would transfer over and that would be a better idea. Okay, doke, so now we're in. There's lots of things you can do with Meterpreter, obviously. Um, one thing you could do would be to get a, a shell. So we'll do command.exe, we'll do I, capital H and E. And that's us now in the system. So if we do IP config, we should actually see the the results or rather the configurations of the target machine which we've now um, broken into. That's its IP address here. And also if you actually go towards the 
the actual machine we're exploiting here. Command. He's just doing net stat. You can actually see the connection has been established, and that's my IP address. I'm in the machine here. So we'll exit that. Now, there's a few things you can do here with Meterpreter. Just a quick play about with this just before I close this down. Now you've seen the exploit. So we'll exit that, and let's just see. First thing you could do would, do would be to get a screenshot. That will basically screenshot the, the page that you can see. So if I do, it's been saved to my root. So ls, and if I do an xdg open for ti, and tab that, you see that's actually the, the desktop of the machine I've broken into. You can just screenshot it. Another good one to do would be to, you could do a hash dump, which would essentially tell you all the, the hashed passwords. Oh, get system. Hmm, wait a minute. Do you know what? We'll leave that one. Go on to run VNC. This is a good one to see. The run VNC essentially allows you to see the machine in real time. You get an actual proper view of the desktop. So I'll run them and show them kind of simultaneously together so you can see what I mean. The VNC player should pop up any moment now. There you go. So this is me essentially got a real live feed of the user's desktops. So if I put them side by side, pop this up here, move you, and I'll load up the actual machine. This is the actual machine, I'll put it side by side. You can see as I move the mouse, you can see the whole, you could basically spy on the person. Um, and that one's just there for you to do. So if I go down and, I don't know, open up notepad. Now here's another thing you can do actually with Meterpreter now I'm thinking about it. If I do, go back to you. If you do, let me think what would be a good one to do. Oh, if you do a key scan, start. This will essentially um, start the sniffer and it will sniff out all the keystrokes that the user types in the machine. So the keystroke sniffer should, I don't know why it's saying failed there, but it should be working. Just double check that. If I go to the machine, and imagine if this was a private conversation on Facebook Messenger, I'm just doing it on Notepad for simplicity here. Hey, this is John. Here is my private password. Not that you would actually ever type this, but... And password one, a nice secure password. There you go. So that person is unwittingly typing away on their keyboard thinking they're fine and if you've captured that you should be able to do that if you do a key scan dump there you've got the actual context of the of what you've written so again this is a short video just to play about with that if you want to go about and mess about with meterpreter there's lots of stuff you can do but i'm going to just leave it at that to keep the video quite short and expedient and yep so that's it and i'll see you soon bye